السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض وخلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا خلق الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج يبتليه فجعله سميعا بصيرا فخلقنا وصورنا ورزقنا وكان فضله علينا كبيرا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والكفء والنظير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وقرة أعيننا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه وخيرته من خلقه وأمينه على وحيه ما اتصلت عين بنظر أو سمعت أذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ألا فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فيا أحبة الكرام أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most gracious the most merciful the all-knowing, the all-powerful, whoever he guides, none can misguide, and whoever he misguides, none can guide. We seek his guidance, we seek his forgiveness, and to him we all return. Our sincere greetings and salutations and much love to our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. The seal of the all-prophets, the mercy to the world, the leader of the all leaders, to his blessed family, his companions, and his entire ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of property, lives, and agricultural products, but give glad tidings to those who are as-sabirun, the patients. This Quranic verse manifests that life, our life in this dunya is a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us with several means to reveal that who will be thankful and who will be ungrateful to him. Tests and trials are the part of our life. Everyone will be tested in certain extent in this dunya, ya akhi. Our wealth is a test. Spouse is a test. Children are tests. Poverty and wealth are tests. Likewise, health and illness are tests. We all are tested in everything we possess in this dunya and this will be continuing. This will be continuing up until our death, up until we leave this dunya. And interestingly, dear brothers and sisters, these tests are not always in the form of hardships and difficulties. 
Sometimes Allah tests us with blessings and bounties. Allahu Akbar. A test, yes, a test in the form of an apparent blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests some people with huge wealth and he see how does he deal with this wealth. He tests some people with huge popularity, with name and fame. He tests people with success and power. So it's not necessary that it should be hardship. It can be a blessing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants to see how we deal with this blessing. And our tests are not identical, dear brothers and sisters. I mean, it's not similar. Everyone's test is different. My test is different than yours. Your test is different than him. Everyone has a different test in our lifetime. Different cushion paper. One doesn't match the other. So dear brothers and sisters, we have to know what am I being tested for. Then we have to respond properly, respond accordingly. And no one in this world got exemption from this test in this dunya. I repeat, no one, not a single one got exemption from this test and trial in this dunya. Even the prophets, one of the Sahaba, asked the Messenger of Allah, Then he said, he asked all the messenger of Allah which people are tested most severely in the world. Then he said, Al-Anbiya, the prophets, and those who are nearest to them, and then those who are nearest to them. A person is tested based on his commitment to his religion. If he is steadfast, if he is steadfast in his righteousness, his trials and tests are more severe than others. And if he is weak in his righteousness, then he will be tested based or according to his strength of religiousness or righteousness, dear brothers and sisters. So look at the life sketch of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We all know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was thrown in the blazing fire. He was ordered to leave his lovely family in the hot desert. And he was instructed to slaughter by his own hand his own beloved son Ismail alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar, what a series of trials. And he passed all the trials he went through. Allah says, وَإِذِ بِتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا And remember, when Ibrahim was tested by his Lord with certain commandments, and he fulfilled all the commandments, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ibrahim, you fulfill all the commandments, I'm going to make you the leader. I'm going to appoint you a leader for the entire mankind. Look at the life sketch of Musa alayhi salam. He faced so many trials by the Pharaoh of his time. We all know the story, right? How about Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam? He also faced so many trials by Banu Israel. And also he had death threat. Finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him by his mercy and blessing. And how about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did he pass a very smooth life? How about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He faced so much so trials by his own tribe. Quraysh, mockery, vulgarism, oppression, physical and mental torture, what not? And finally he was compelled to migrate to Medina al-Hijrah. So this is the life stories of the most pious and religious righteous people on earth even they were not spared from this test and trial of dunya so how about you and me all the great people of this ummah also faced the tough trials for an example imam malik alayhi rahma what a big personality millions of people are benefiting from his help still now 
he was dragged along the streets of Medina by the oppressors. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he was lashed inside the prison brutally. Same goes to Al Imam Al A'zam Abu Hanifa alayhi rahmah. He was tortured in, in the jail. So, what does it mean, dear brothers and sisters? It means no one can avoid this test and trial in this dunya. We all have to face it. No way to escape. No chance. We have to face it. And we have to pass this, dear brothers and sisters. Now, the question arises why is this test false? Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nicely answered this, this question in the Quran. Allah says, Alladhi khalaq al mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. And it is He who created death and life in order to test which of you are best in actions, which of you are best in deeds. So the very purpose for which life and death were created is to test our actions, to evaluate, to examine our deeds and actions in this dunya, dear brothers and sisters. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Do people think that they will be left alone just because they say, I believe and will not be tested? Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested those who are before them. And surely Allah will know the ones who are truthful and the ones who are liar, dear brothers and sisters. Now, what should be our response? We understood that we have to face this test and trial and this is how life designs. So now, what should be our response to this test and trial in this dunya as a believer? As a believer, number one, we have to have patience, steadfastness. In all of our activities, dear brothers and sisters, we have to have steadfastness, passions. Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. Bushra for the sabirin. Glad tidings for those who have passions in their activities. Number two, we have to put our trust in Allah. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah will be sufficient for him. And number three, we have to play our role. We have to play our role along with the sabr and tawakkul ala Allah. We have to strive. We have to struggle our level best to overcome these challenges we are facing and to find the way out. And only then the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can achieve, dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا As for those who strive in our cause, certainly I shall guide them to the right path. And if we successfully overcome and pass this test and trial, we will be rewarded, inshallah. We will be rewarded. And rewards are always associated with trials and tests. Our beloved Prophet said, the greatest reward comes with the greatest trials and tests, dear brothers and sisters. And sometimes these tests and trials are good for us. All this hardship and difficulty and test and trial and calamity, but sometimes it's good for us. How? Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, a calamity that makes you turn to Allah is better than a blessing that makes you forget the remembrance of Allah. What a nice saying. He said, a calamity that makes you turn to Allah is better than a blessing that makes you forget the remembrance of Allah. Because during the tough time, we make more prayer, right? During the difficulties and tough time, we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more. So it connects us with our Lord, the Almighty. So sometimes it's good for us. It's not always negative, it has some positive signs. Like test and trial, it elevates our rank. Our beloved Prophet said, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wishes to upgrade the rank of His slaves. 
but his amal, his worldly deed may not up to that standard. So he put his slave into the trial. Allah Akbar. If he pass the trial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his rank up until that rank he wished for. Subhanallah. And test and trial remove our sins. Our beloved Prophet say, it's narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Messenger of Allah said, Ma yusibul muslima min nasabim wala wasabim wala hammin wala huznin wala adhan wala ghammin hatta shawkati yushakuha illa kafar Allahu biha min khataya. No Muslim afflicted by calamity, continuous pain, anxiety, grief, mental worry, injury, even a thorn that pricks him without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes some of his sins for that. Subhanallah bihamdi. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he saves his slave from the punishment, the blazing punishment, the blazing fire, the dangerous punishment in the hereafter by putting his slave in some trials and calamity and difficulty. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who when afflicted with calamity remember sincerely his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recite inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran alladheena asabatkum musibatum qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un they are the people, the believer, when they are afflicted by calamity, they recite, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Indeed, we belong to him, and indeed, we will return to him. We all belong to him, we all return to him. And we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a sabr, a tawakkul, al azima, al thubad the determination to overcome all these calamities, difficulties, tests and trials in our life. And we hope rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter for facing these tests and trials we are facing right now in this dunya. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayat wa dhikri al-hakim wa taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum tilawatahu innahu huwa sami'u al-alim أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فاتقوا الله يا عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كتبت وهم لا يظلمون اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها أولها وآخرها علانيتها وسرها صغيرها وكبيرها خطأها وعمدها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم يا غفور يا غفار اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا في مقامنا هذا إلا غفرت ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميكتا إلا رحمته ولا مجاهدا في سبيلك إلا نصرته ولا حاجة من حوائد الدنيا هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاة إلا وفيتها يا الله اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل الدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه كل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين سوءا فجعل كيده في نحره وجعل تدبيره تدميرا اللهم اهدي ووفق ملك هذا البلد بما تحب وترضى اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا سخاء رخاء وسائر بلاد المسلمين 
اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وخنا عذاب النار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة